And now, from Glasgow... So, hello, welcome to my weekly update. Um, it is currently Saturday morning at um, five o'clock in the morning. So you will see cats running around because that's when they play. Um, so I've had to do a re-record. Um, I haven't had to, um, but big news. I've changed jobs again. Um, I have nothing bad to say about my previous job. I absolutely loved it. It was the best job probably I've ever done. But because it's all based on contracts, when the contracts don't come in, I don't get any work. And I've just not been earning the money. Um, so I've gone to a different company. Um, it's a company I worked for before I'm doing the Glasgow to London buses, plus some other buses. Um, and it's... You know, it's guaranteed hours, guaranteed money, and it's it's a job I know, it's a job I uh, I enjoy, and I obviously I get paid in my bank every week. Um, I'll, I'll I'll go a little bit further into the the adventures of the non Scottish Scottish driver, the Scottish non Scottish driver, as I call myself. Um, so couple of little things. Last week, I believe it was last week. I might be repeating myself again. Um, I did a little bit of uh, showing you what I've been buying and I forgot an item. Um, so I bought the Buccaneer the other week and I also bought this just for a laugh. Um, apparently it's a really tricky kit, not because it's a tricky kit, but because um, it's quite badly made. Uh, the instructions aren't perfect and some of the parts are a little bit tricky. So I just thought it's an interesting subject matter. And um, we'll see how I get on. It's a bit of a challenge. It was about 12 quid. However, I have been doing more shopping, um, which is fantastic. So let me go table down. Please excuse the mess. So two things that I have bought from my regular supply MJR hobbies. I bought this, which I just thought was a little bit funky. Um... It's, you're not seeing a distorted angle. That is what it looks like. It looks like they've got a bus and they've pulled it and um, they've extended the front and they've added an extra set of wheels in. This is from Roden. This is the, I'm going to butcher this pronunciation. This is the Vomag Omnibus 7 OR660. And you might be thinking, Penny, you've got this quite, uh, quite wide angle, quite uh, far back. Um, but there's a reason and that's because of what's coming next. Um, so I'm being quite brief in this, but these are what the instructions look like, the layout. And I think I'm okay with them. Um, they look quite clear and concise. And the colour call out is all in Vallejo, which is going to be fairly easy for me to convert to my own choice of colours. And... I will do a full unboxing when I come to build it. A um, little bit disappointed that the bag had split. I haven't opened these. Um, this is how they came. Um, I don't want to pull all the pieces out because it's going to be tricky. All the sprues stuck in one bag. A bit disappointed about that. But the detail does look really good. Um, so I'm, I think I'm going to enjoy that. So I will crack on with that at one point. Um, so the next thing that I saw... Oddly enough, I saw it on YouTube being built. You know when you're watching YouTube and you get these videos just pop up? Well, the build of this came up. Cut a long story short, I looked at it on eBay. Um, you won't buy this in the shops anymore unless you want to spend about £250. Um, I got this for £95 including post. I think it was... Excuse me, I think it was £90 plus £5 postage. 
There is a ripped box. That's the bad news. It's 1 to 72 scale. It's the Black Pearl from Pirates of the Caribbean. And as a little bonus, it comes with... Dun, 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 dun. It comes with uh, 12 paints. All Revel. Which is an absolute bonus because, by coincidence, I was having a chat with a friend and we were the subject of Rebel Paints comes up. You know when you just talk bollocks to a friend and uh, these, these came up. And um, these are pretty much like the Airfix paints in that I didn't really used to like them. Um, but th I tried them more recently and I've actually got on with them. Now, with regards to the Airfix, I don't like their Generation 1 paints, but I do like their Generation 2. And I said to him that I didn't used to like Revel. However, a few years back, I got a mystery box. I used to get like a mystery paint box. And um, they gave us some metallic paints. And the guy had said I was looking for gloss black and I couldn't find any gloss black. So I gave you the Revel. So I tried the Revel gloss black. And it was okay. It really was okay. So I'm quite excited to try these 12 paints. Um, so again, I'll give you a very brief look. Now this particular sprue is open. But the only thing that this, this particular bag, sorry, this bag is open. The only thing it, it contains is the hole and piece of the stand. Uh, whether that's been pulled off or it's fallen off, I really don't know. Um, it looks like if it's been taken off the sprue, it's not been cut off. So I suspect it's just broken and snapped off. Um, but this is the hull. Um, I'm a little bit indifferent about the detail. Um, it looks like at the top they've made de they've made an effort to do planking, but then they kind of given up a little bit part way down. Um, now the video that I was watching. He was actually he wasn't happy with the detail, so he added in the pla the wood detail. Um, so he actually sat there and he scribed all the detail in. So that's something I may give a go. At um, I'm not going to open any of the sprues, but all of the other bags. Sorry, I'm not going to open any bags, um, but all the other bags are sealed. Now this sprue sprues contains let me show you this is a level 5 kit by the way but I believe Revel set their levels based on the number of parts and there is a lot of parts so we have got to make 32 cannons now in the YouTube video that I watched he wasn't happy with the detail, so he, he redesigned them and reprinted them off in on a 3D printer. I'm not going to do that for simple reason. You're going to put all of these cannons in, and then in the next stage, you actually have the choice of having the, the gun ports open or gun ports closed. I can't see the point in having the gun ports closed if you're going to have cannons, so they will be open. But, as you can see from future stages, you're not going to see a lot of the cannons. So I can't see the point in going through all of that work to make them look that much better if you're going to hide it up. So, I'll keep them as is. Um, but I think that's going to be a fun build. Um, and there's an awful lot of rigging for it. Now, I suspect this came... This was what we, what we, I'll class it as an aftermarket part, um, but there's four bot, uh, four sp sp spool, spools of cotton. <coughs> I don't think these came with the kit. This might have come with the kit, as you can see. It's four two different brands there. Um, so we've got string. Whether I'll use a string, I don't know, and that's it. But to be honest with you, for ninety quid, ninety five quid. I'm really not complaining about this. Um, so, first deviation from the original video. I'd, what I'd done is I thought I, w I thought I was going to be doing some London trips. 
and I thought I wasn't going to have time to record uh, a, a channel update. So I recorded the channel update on the Tuesday. And I don't know why, but I said on the channel update, if you're watching this, I've not had time to re-record it. If you're not watching this, I've made a new one. Well, if you're not watching it, you're never going to know I record it unless I told you. Um, so, right, let's go. Sorry. So I received this the other day from the absolutely wonderful Peter Webster. Um, now, I do ap I have apologised to him and I apologise again. Um, I received it. I was finishing a shift quite late. And I had, a, I had a shift the next morning. So I literally came home, saw the package, thought it was a mobile phone holder, which I'll get to the phone in a little while. Um, thought it was a mobile phone case. Just popped it on its side, got up in the morning, went to open it to, to use the case. And it wasn't the case. And at the time, I just thought it was a set of pens. Um... So then Peter messaged me saying, oh, did you get the gift? I said, yeah, I got the gift. But I couldn't really sort of say anything about it because I didn't know what it was. So this is a set of three scratch brushes. And it says here, I don't really know exactly what I'm dealing with um, because um, I do have something. I think I have something similar. And I think this is going to be an improvement on what I already have. So it says fiberglass, brass, steel, bristle. So what this is, I can't open it. I can't, I can see how, but I can't open it. So I'm going to have to resort to the scissors, I think. Oh no, there's not even any clothes. Right, so what this is, there we go. So, in there, it's got a fiberglass tip. So, <clears throat> it saves the need for sandpaper. If you've got um, a, a small area that you want to sand, uh, you can use this. Now, fiberglass is very, it's, put, it's, it's uh, abrasive, but it's quite fine. So, let's say, for example... I want it to rub away the 9 on that 29 and make it just a 2. Now, I could get my sandpaper in, but obviously, as you can see, with just a small piece of sandpaper, I'm going to risk uh, rubbing all around. So what we do is we get our, our pen and we can be quite precise. And you see there, I can get it quite precise on that, on that 9. Now, I use the fiberglass one more than I think I do, um, because it is quite handy. Now, it is like using a very, very fine piece of sandpaper. Now, with this being called brass and steel bristle, I suspect what this is, and I've never seen a brass or a, uh, a steel bristle version. There we go. So this is the brass version, as you can see. So that's going to be more abrasive than the fiberglass version. So, yes, so that is a lot more abrasive. So that would probably be good for, it's not, It's as you can see, that that's done a much better job of getting the nine off. So I would suspect this would be much more useful for getting maybe paint off a plastic model rather than uh, it's not i don't think that's going to take the plastic down too much it is quite still quite smooth and then what you can do once you've got the main bit off you can then go back to your fiberglass version and just that will finish that off even smoother there we go like you'll never know that nine was ever there by the time you paint over that, that will be absolutely fine. So already, I can see that I've just upped my game with this. Um, by the way, if you want to know where to get these from, all I can tell you is, is Amazon. Um, Peter occasionally buys me these gifts. And I'm not going to be rude and say, oh, where is it all? What is it? How much did it cost? Right, so this is the um, steel bristle version. So this is, as you can imagine... 
it's a lot more abrasive. So we might actually be able to take, yeah, it is more abrasive, but it's not, it's not strong enough to take. I would suspect you'd probably, it would affect the plastic on that. It would scratch it. But as you can see, look, it's taken that paint off, no problems. So it's just very, very handy because this is very smooth. I would probably class this as smooth, not very fine. Uh, this is the, the brass version. And this is very fine, very smooth. Not going to be strong enough to remove lumps and bumps on your plastic model. Um, but as you can see, it's strong enough to take the, uh, the paint off. This, this uh, brass version will probably leave some minor scratches. And then the fiberglass one will just smooth those scratches off. So I've got a feeling I will be making a lot of use of this brass one. Um, I haven't got a brass and a steel one. Um, but that's really, really handy. Um, there is a sticker on the back which might give it away. <coughs> as to how to find it on Amazon. But I'll be absolutely honest with you guys. That's all I can. All I know about where to find it. Somewhere on Amazon. And I'm not going to be rude enough to look it up. Uh, I'm not one of these people. When someone sends me a gift. I'm looking it up and going. Oh how much did it cost. And the, you know. Maybe one day that will wear out. And I'll need another one. Um, but by the time that wears out. The price will be different anyway. So it'll be a lot more expensive by then, won't it? Um, right, so, job. Um, so I am now working as coach driver for a big green uh, bus company, a bus company. It's not the name of the company. Um, I tend to not give away who I work for. So, by the way, excuse the dressing gown. Um, like I said, it's five in the morning. It's the middle of August. And um, here I am sitting there at five o'clock in the morning absolutely freezing so so the other big news in my life my phone has finally just had enough i had a i had a samsung fold 4 and i've absolutely loved the phone it's been absolutely brilliant for work because when i open it up it's this big it's like having two mobile phones it's glued together and it means that I can run two sat now, so I can have two, two mobile phone screens running at once. And it's had this fault, which I have now discovered is a common fault, where if you just so much as fold it, it cuts the power. It doesn't turn off, it just, it's like you pull the battery out. And it turns out it needs a new motherboard and a new battery, which is going to cost three, four hundred quid. Um, so I just thought, right, well, I'll get a new phone. Um, and I've just lost a little bit of trust with the Samsung Folds at the moment. Um, obviously, I had the Fold 4, which is four-year-old technology the way I see it. Obviously, they improve with each version. I think they're up to the 6 now. And it's a lot of money. And it's quite new tech. Um, the screen was starting to get cracks in the middle. From Obviously, if you take anything and you constantly fold it, you're gonna get the stress in the middle. And then obviously you've got this, this fault with the... So I got myself the Samsung A35. It's not big, it's not clever, but it does the job. And to be honest with you, I've been using it for the last week, absolutely hammering it with the um, uh, sat-nav, and it works absolutely fine. Um, I think I'm at this age now where I don't need all the, all the up-to-date modern phone. I need a phone that's going to do the job. Um, I like to watch a little bit of YouTube events, uh, every now and again. I've got this uh, lovely visitor at the moment. How are you, my lovely? Um, so, yeah, I had a bit of trouble with O2. Um, they sent this phone out, and they'd somehow they'd attached someone else's account. I... I don't understand how this systems work. You know when a company has these funny procedures and from the customer point of view, you're like, well, all you need to do is this, that and the other or, or how did you do that? But obviously O2 have all their systems and I don't know how it's worked. But 
Um, I ordered a new contract, um, which actually saved me money. Um, I am paying about the same amount of money with this phone as I was on the other contract without the phone um, because the phone, the minimum period had run out and I was on SIM only. And of course I figured out why. And the reason being is O2, like many companies, they have this minimum price increase every April, which is 3.8% plus inflation. So of course I've had three price updates each price update is about six or seven percent. So I'm paying maybe 10 or 20 percent more than I was before. And so, of course, now I've got a new contract. They've gone in with a base price. So, of course, it saved me money. So, yeah, that's where they're making the money off, you guys, is just this price increase every year. Um, so, yeah, I got a new phone. If I have a spare couple of hundred quid, God, did I just say that? Who has? Oh, I'll just take it out of my pin money. Here you go. Here's 400 quid. Not a problem. I shall give a thousand pounds to a beggar because I don't need it myself. Yeah, I'm not like that, guys. But if I ever do have a spare couple of hundred quid that I can afford to uh, to spend, I might get the phone update uh, repaired. Um, but just not yet. So, new job. Um, so the reason I'd made the update last Tuesday was because I had just got loaded up with so many shifts. Um, <clears throat> they can't just put you on a rotor. It's one of those funny jobs where um, we, we have all new drivers come in and they're what they call spare, which means your shifts just get allocated. Um, and they've given me six Londons. Um, now, I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to air my work dirty laundry on stream. Um, but it turns out I was working with a guy who I didn't get on with previously when I was there. I did have some big problems with him. Um, but I said to the boss, I go, oh, who am I with? And he said, oh, you're with Alan Smith. That's not his name. Names has been changed to protect the innocent. Um, so I went, ooh. And he just said, well, you know, it's been two years. You know, is it not time to move on? And I thought, yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right. So I came in the next day. I'm quite happy to work with him. Um, and he, But he actually refused to work with me and he walked out, um, which left me not being able to work. And then it turns out he'd come back if I, he wasn't working with me. So guess who lost the shift that night? Um, so the boss has said I won't lose out money-wise. So it looks like I'm being paid a shift for nothing, which I think is fair because I've not done anything wrong. Why should I lose out? Um, but I've been doing a couple of what we call the north bands. Uh, the north bands are all day shifts. So they go to Aberdeen or they go to Inverness or Edinburgh. Whereas the south bands are the two day shifts that all go down to London. Um, so let me have a quick look at my calendar. Um, now my, my work calendar, um, this is going to mean nothing to you, but that's what it looks like at the moment. Green means shift, red means day off. Um, now, because I was using my taco before I started at the company and you have to have days off by law based on your taco, not based on work. They've been in a right old muddle about my days off. Um, now, in a nutshell, you have to have a 45 hour rest period every single week, but every other week, well, in any particular week, you can change that to a 24 hour rest period. So long as A, your previous week's rest and your next week rest is both 45 hours and you've got to make up 24 hour rest within three weeks. Now to put simply, what that basically means is that you could have two days off one week the next week, you could have two split days. 
So you could have, say, Monday and Wednesday off. That's not a 45-hour rest, but you've made your shift up. Um, and I also found out you could have one day off one week and three days off the next week because by having three days off, that makes up for your one day that you're owed. Now, last week I had, it was a little bit sneaky, but I don't mind. I didn't actually get a day off. What they did is they they gave me a shift that finished um, early. And then the next day they gave me a late shift. So I actually had a 24-hour rest period between the end of one day and the start of the next. So that worked out okay. Now next week, he's he's just gone, right, I'm giving you three days off. That will reset your hours. Then I know where you are because on his system... He hasn't seen a 45-hour rest period. So he thinks, a system thinks my rest period was Saturday, Sunday before I started work, which wasn't the case. Um, so, yeah. So next week, I actually have Monday off. Um, Spirit, your bum is in my way. Do you know that? She doesn't care. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I've got Monday off. And then I've got Thursday, Friday off. Um, what to do with that time? Well, I've got a list of about 4,000 things. Um, so desk update. Desk has come to a little bit of a slowdown, mainly because I've run out of money because I've not been earning money from work. Um, the spray booth is almost ready. It's, uh, it's ready enough to be able to use acrylic paints. It's not ready to enough to use anything else because I haven't got the extractor fan ready. Um, next week when I get paid, I'll be order, ordering all the bits and bobs. It's about 60 quid's worth of equipment left to buy. Extractor fan hose and a, and a big massive Jubilee clip. And then I'll be doing some testing with some paints. I've got myself some Mr. Colors. Um, I've got myself some... Mr. Finishing Surfacer and all that smelly stuff and I'll be ready to give it a test run. I've got my silicon mat in there. Um, I will be doing, I'm, I'm going to be releasing a video as soon as I can and it's mainly about the, the desk um, but I also I'm going to make the Tiger 1 tank. Um, there's not a lot of skill involved in the Tiger 1. It's not an exciting model but it's the perfect thing to test my desk etc etc so the actual room so i went to, to clear the balcony out and i've got quite a lot cleared out on the balcony um however underneath all the muck under there i found a load of rubbish now what had happened some years ago uh when v was living here we had done a clear out and we'd accumulate so much rubbish we couldn't fit it all in the wheelie bin now, we normally fill maybe half a wheelie bin. So what we decided to do was put all the bags out on the balcony. And then what we would do is every time the bin men come the night before, we'll fill up all that spare space with the bags. Um, and then eventually we'll get rid of it. And that didn't actually seem to happen properly. The bags have either degraded or the birds have got to it or something. So I'm left with a big pile of rubbish not even in bags. Now, we've just had our, our bin men. Thankfully, they were going to go out on strike. And thankfully, the strike was called off at the last minute. So my bin has been emptied on Tuesday. So I'm currently dealing with an empty wheelie bin. Um, I think I've got about three bags of rubbish out there. So on my next day off, which is Monday, that balcony will be cleared out. Once the balcony is cleared out, the, the wood, you can't see, you can just see the bottom corner there of a green container. That's got some wood in it, uh, mainly just uh, uh, bits of wood, not flat pieces. Uh, the flat pieces, you can actually see them in the corner. So that will go. And then I will start work probably Thursday and Friday. I'm just going to spend one day. I'm going to make a shelf. And then this shelf can be replaced and that will start to look organized. And I'm actually thinking about making an L-shaped uh, shelf. 
I'm not sure yet as if I have an L-shaped shelf which comes out this way um, it will be a lot more storage on there bits and bobs I can put on there but it will then hide this part of my shelves so all we'll have left display wise is that side so but then again I'll have display there so what I could perhaps do is have all my built models on those shelves and all the, all the models that I've got in progress can then live on this one but bearing in mind that once I um, finish these part works um, I'm not planning on getting any more so what will go on the shelf I don't know so these are all the things I've got to think about um, so I'll figure it all out um, especially as I uh, see I've also got this new cabinet on wheels um, which does actually hold my models that I'm part way through very very well um, so yeah I don't know decisions decisions um, but the desk is getting there right guys we are half an hour into the video and I've told you nothing about my channel um, so I'm just bear with me a sec I did some channel uh, statistics but that was based on Tuesday obviously it's now Saturday um, so oh my goodness thank you everybody so in the last seven days I have gained two subscribers um, now when I did the channel update on Tuesday I was on zero for the last 28 days now I had lost a couple of subscribers um, and I believe that that was because I'd fallen out with someone over something silly um, and obviously I've now got another subscriber so in the last let's have a look at the last seven days so in the last seven days I've gained one subscriber um, I don't and I have got so let's have a look at last last year now what I'm really focusing on is watch time hours um, because um, oh by the way thank you two shout outs to the lovely Peter Webster um, who's given me two super thanks that is always appreciated um, it's not the soup don't please don't think I'm not being grateful it's not the super thanks I'm trying to push um, because for 199 super thanks I actually earn one pa uh, 81 pence that means that over more than a pound goes to YouTube for sitting there going we're not doing anything Penny can do all the all the hard work and we'll take most of our money um, but if I can just push for a thousand subs and four thousand watch hours I can do ad, ad revenue I know it's bloody annoying for you guys um, but that's a really good way to support my channel and that way if you watch my videos you're helping me earn money that money can then go into kits no problems and everybody's a winner um, so yeah stat wise now the issue I've got this issue I call it an issue it's not um, so for the last because I've been back now for about a year so every watch time hour that I got has has bumped the total up for the last one year however I'm now back see this time last year I had 2.2 watch hours in a day because obviously the channel was just starting to kick back in so now I need 2.3 watch hours today in order for the growth to happen and then tomorrow I need 1.9 so I need two watch hours in order for my channel to grow um, otherwise it's going down a bit by the time we get to about November when the channel really start, did kick back in I'm starting to need sort of 30 or 40 hours a day um, so I really need to get my channel going if I want to grow it um, so yes yeah, so on to the individuals so obviously today is Sunday tomorrow we have got 
issue 35 to issue 38 of the Robocop. Now that is building up a right leg. So I think we go from the knee to the thigh. And I, that's actually quite a good issue. I, I'm at, I, did, I have been enjoying that. Uh, last week was the ET issue 30, 31, 32. That was dealing with the base. What did you guys think to the base? I really like it. It's got a lot of potential. Um, just like most part works, it has a battery compartment. So, you know, you have a battery compartment, you put the batteries in, you switch it on, the whole thing works and does whatever it's meant to do. But this base has got a power supply. How simple and wonderful is that? So it looks like, it looks like I'm not saying it is because I don't know, but it looks like we can plug it into the wall uh, mains. Um, so Tuesday... I've delayed the Warhammer. I keep saying, oh, I'm trying to bring it back next week, trying to bring it back next week. And I've just thought, right, I keep trying and it's not happening. So let me just get a bit of life sorted out. So that is definitely coming back in September. I'm going to make no more mention of Tuesday's Warhammer until September. And I promise you it's coming back in September. I've just got the next four issues, uh, which means there are six issues left to complete the series which is on the one hand it's good because that's another part work that I'm no longer doing which means I could put more money into scale model fund but on the other hand it means that we're nearly 50 issues behind um, so yeah gotta get that sorted out um, Wednesday last week I had the unboxing of the bus and that seemed to have gone down very well it looks like it's something that you guys will enjoy, which is really good because it's something that I am enjoying. It's a slightly different medium. Now, I will warn you, it's being built at a slow pace. I'm not getting in there and building half of it and then the other half will come next week. Um, so, for example, uh, there is actually, I've done quite a few stages on this next one. We've done stages one to five. But stages one to three is pretty much, this is the wood on a fret. Cut the wood off in this way and then sand off the pieces. So that's like stages one to three. Um, so there's not an awful lot done in stages four and five. Um, but it's being dealt, done at a nice slow pace. The idea is it does look quite a complicated model. But when you look at one stage at a time, there isn't an awful lot to do. And then there's like 150 stages. If you're a beginner to these kind of models, I think it looks far too complicated. And people will look at the whole thing and they'll go, I can't do that. I'm not even going to start it. So my aim is to just do small, small segments. So each segment... Beginners will look at that and go, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that. Oh, all I've got to do is get a little bit of wood glued. That's it. I'm done. So then obviously the painting, the painting is painting. You know, um, if, you, if you cannot paint, you're not going to be able to do the model. Um, and they are going to be quite lengthy when, when we do the painting. But that's the way it is. So the first day kicks in this Wednesday. I'm really excited because people seem to be getting excited about the unboxing. Let's see how they get excited about the build. Um, I can't really show you because I've actually filmed the next three stages already. So if I said this is what I'm up to, it's three weeks worth of work. Um, Thursday, Gauntlet. Now, last week I did the premium base stage two. This week we have a bumper stage. Now, I don't know if this is the first one, but I've started to edit my videos a little bit. Um, I have done two, three, four, five, six, five stages in one video. I managed to get it down to about 15 minutes. It's a little bit easy to edit because most of it is just screwing. I think there was about 473 million screws in five issues. Um, my hand was absolutely killing me at the end of it. Um, so we have literally gone. Um, anyone who's been keeping up to date with the gauntlet 
knows that <coughs> you start off when you do a new section you start off they go here's a piece wait till next issue next issue is attach this piece to that one then you'll go for a series of, of videos get this piece attached to that one and that's what we've got for these next five stages so you're not seeing the big the big huge bit over there you're seeing a panel build up um, and then later on that panel gets attached to things and then we start on a new bit so that's basically what it is and it, it, it's nice uh, and then we'll have the uh, premium base part three the week after um, nothing for Friday and Saturday yet um, I'm desperate to get the scale model content going but not yet um, and that is my channel update caught up with um, so what have you guys been up to um, now I have been trying to sort of tell you about things like what I've been watching the honest truth is I've not been watching anything um, I've not even been watching YouTube I've just not had the time um, which is such a shame um, sometimes when I'm getting ready for work someone might be doing a live and I'm quite literally popping in saying hello hi guys I can't interact I'm getting ready for work and I'm watching maybe 10-15 minutes of a live I know the people doing the lives appreciate it because obviously any interaction you've got an interaction you've got 10 minutes of view time you know if you get a thousand people to watch for 10 minutes that's that's not bad is it um but i'm trying to support youtubers as much as i can but obviously work comes first so uh gone through work so i've got a couple of shifts left this week and then i'm doing a four day week next week i'm doing two trips down to london really looking forward to it um they've changed the shift since i worked for them before um it used to be you go down to London, you hand your coach over to someone who's coming back, you then travel to the hotel, which takes about an hour, you then try and get some sleep, sometimes you're really lucky, you get about six hours sleep, and then you travel back the next day. They've changed it now, and instead of having a hotel right by Heathrow, they've actually got a travel lodge at one of the service stations on the way up. So what you now do is you go down to London and then you come about a quarter of the way back you stop at a service station and then remember because you've you you you're now working longer because the bus has come up part of the way when you take over that bus is later as well because you're taking over I think we take over around about Luton um, so and then you've got five minutes walk time to the hotel so that's a good two or three hours extra in bed. Um, the drivers are actually complaining, get this, that there's too much time between dropping your bus off and picking your next one up. They say sometimes it's like 12 hours. And um, obviously you want to get in, get some sleep, and then get up, go and get your bus done, get the day done. And they're saying, oh, you get like 12 hours. And I'm like, do you know what? That's fantastic. Um, for me personally, sometimes some of these shifts, the way they go, do you know what? Coming in at the end of your shift and sitting down and having a coffee and just chilling for an hour and then go on to bed, that is an absolute luxury sometimes. So when they say to me, oh, you know, you might get 12 hours and I'm like, oh, I've got about three or four hours where I can just chill out and do whatever I want. Sit in the bar, have a Coke. Obviously, I can't drink because I'm driving. Uh, maybe sit on my bed, watch a bit of TV. Got my phone with me, catch up on a bit of YouTube. I don't know. I've, I've got mad projects running in my head. Mental projects, which will probably never work. Um, models in a hotel. How about this one, guys? Models on a coach. So the idea is I take an Airfix starter set with me and I've got to build it on the coach in, in the crew seat. So when I'm not driving, I'm going to try and film myself uh, making an Airfix starter set, hurtling down the motorway, trying to paint and um, 
I th- I mean that'd probably be more comedy than than anything serious. But um, but then again, you know, if I can build a good model on on the coach hurtling down the motorway, wouldn't that be a good promotional video for the company? You know, these are the things you can do on our buses. You can you know chill out. You can charge your phone. You can use your laptop, or you can make an airfix scale model. Um, I think that would just be mental. But anyway, guys, do not push me to do that. Don't go, yes, yes, you must do it and push me to do it because I don't think it's going to work out. So um, that is, I think, everything. And for some strange reason, my updated update is small, less alert, shorter than my previous one. Um, So, guys, that is all I can think of. Um, one new part work I know is coming out. Well, there's quite a few, actually. Um, the Warhammer's coming out. A new Warhammer's coming out, but it deals with 40k. Uh, I'll be honest with you guys. I'm so far behind on my Warhammer. Um, what is it called? What do they call it now? The Old World Age of, Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar is the one I really like. I'm going to generate a lot of hate now. Warhammer 40k has never done anything for me. I don't know why. The figures are just as good as the Age of Sigma figures. Um, it's just not my my thing. It's I like the old-fashioned get in there with swords and bows and arrows and crossbows and just sheer brute strength. Um, 40k to me is all about guns and tanks and missiles and spaceships and... It really doesn't do it for me. And I don't want to spend 50 quid on a little tank that's got... They're good quality. Don't get me wrong. I'm not dissing Warhammer. Um, But I'd rather... If I did a tank, I'd rather do a historical tank and get all the accuracy on it than just get this. Here's six bits of plastic. Make a cube. Put a turret on it. A few extra big guns coming off it. And paint it. Hello, mister. What are you up to? These poor cats, I feel almost sorry for them. Um, When the room is cleared, they actually come in and they play. And it's so much fun to watch because with it being a wooden floor, they end up skidding everywhere. And it's they look like they're taking that skid into account because they seem to be going with it. Um, But every time they come in this room, everything's changed and there's new things to explore. Um, So, and he's, they've got a thing now. About going behind that, I've built that that shelf as close to the wall as I can, but there's a little tiny sticky eight bit about three inches, so that means I do have about a three inch gap behind the shelf, and the little buggers keep getting in there, and I think they know I can't get to them, so I'm going to have to build a little bit on the side like a side wall to stop them from getting in. Um, they've already been climbing behind this desk because where the spray booth is there's a gap and they're climbing on the spray booth and then in they get um there's a gap at the bottom um where i've lifted the side bit up a little bit um she can get in spirit can get in but the hole's just a little bit too small for shadow um so of course spirit loves it because it's a way that she can get away from shadow and it's the one area in the house where she doesn't get attacked by him um because they do, they do play a lot, and they are playing. Um, but him being a little bit bigger, he's a little bit too rough for him. We can just see him in the corner emerging now. There he goes. How are you, Mister? You come over to say hello, have you? Come on then. Are you coming up? Are you coming up? Come and say hello to the millions of audience. Yep, she's just come out from behind the thing. So. Yep, there we go. So, that is it for me then. Um, not really an awful lot else to report. Um, now, my next channel update. Um, my shifts at the moment, they go up to Sunday. Right, I'm on an early... Oh, oh. No, I'm on a day shift on the Sunday. And I sign off at five o'clock. So I will make my next channel update on a Saturday unless my duties change. 
because uh, I'm working 7.15 to 17.05. Um, so Sunday will be too late to film an update. Uh, so I'll film it Saturday night. And I like filming them Saturday nights. Um, I won't have a lot of time. I'll try and make it a quick update, guys. Um, I might even record it Friday. Fr late Friday afternoon. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, I have got a story to tell you about every. I've had a problem. Um, actually, I'll tell you about it. So what's happened is I had another delivery from MJR Hobbies. I feel really bad for MJR Hobbies because they've done nothing wrong. Now, all of the, I live in a flat block. It's uh, it's enclosed. Um, you've got the entrance bit and then you've got my house is on the second floor. I've got plant pots outside my house. I just need to put some plants in. Um, and then every courier knows that I authorise them to leave safe. They just leave the parcel either at the front door or behind the plant pot not a problem well I was expecting a model uh, I can't remember what I've ordered cannot remember what I've ordered um, it was something anyway um, now it turned yeah. up um, now nor normally that MJR always do, uh, posts on a Friday and they send it by every and majority of the time but not always it will show up at my house on a Saturday. I would say as a rough average, they'll deliver it 70% of the time on a Saturday. Um, and anything that doesn't get to me by Saturday, usually delivered on a Monday. Um, so I'd ordered this model and um, it hadn't arrived Saturday. So I gave it no more thought because it doesn't always get through. Um, and then I came home Monday and it still hadn't been delivered on the Monday or so I thought um, so I, I I think I was just too tired and too busy to worry about it anyway I was working Tuesday and I thought I'll just check the tracking I'll see if it's coming out today in all fairness to every it's very very unusual that it takes that long uh, so I checked the tracking and it said delivered on Monday. I thought, oh, which is obviously the previous day. So I looked at the tracking picture and it looked like they delivered it right down the bottom where everybody, it's right next to the main communal door where everybody puts their bikes. So, and I got home Tuesday night and it wasn't there. Um, it, I think he did leave it there. Looking at the picture... Um, and of course what happened is I come in, I walk straight past, I go, wasn't looking down there because I wasn't thinking to look down there. And obviously some point between Monday afternoon and uh, Tuesday afternoon, someone's probably moved it or stolen it or, uh, I mean, you never know, tomorrow someone might knock on my door and go, oh, this was left out, I kept it for you. Um, but <coughs> I'm obviously upset because... He couldn't be bothered to go up two floors to deliver it at my front door. Um, so I'm, I've got a, I've got a, uh, what do they call it, a complaint, a query going through. And hopefully I'll get the model replaced. Um, if not, I've just missed out on it because I ain't got the money to replace it at the moment. But I'm a little bit upset. And then, of course, that's now added a little bit of worry um, because I'm due the Infinity Gauntlet next pack any day now. Now, Scott from Building With The Boys has messaged me, and he says, oh, have you have you got any problems with your packs? This is, this is what's happened. And I'm like, I've not even received my pack. Um, it's not technically late yet. <coughs> I think they've said, oh, it's due by the 28th. But as you know, if you're a fan home customer you do get your packs before they say it's due by this date. Um, so, and I, I, I've just, I've lost track with them now. I don't know what's going through, what's not going through. I think, and I might be wrong here, I think all, all three packs, Robocop, E.T. and Infinity Gauntlet, have been paid for but not received yet. So they're in that, they're in that stage. Um... Definitely the Infinity Gauntlet. I think I've just recently paid for the Robocop. 
Uh, so stages 39 to 42 should be with me. Um, usually comes after the Infinity Gauntlet. In fact, I think there's a couple of days between them. Um, and I have had the email from... See, the trouble is with Fan Home, they send you an email saying your package is on its way. But if you read the email, it doesn't tell you what that package is. So you don't know which package it is. And they they use... They now started using Yodel, haven't they? But they don't give you a tracking number, which is a bit of a pain in the bum. I just wish they'd give you a tracking number. Every other company I use that uses couriers, they give you tracking numbers. And then, because I bought this phone, I've had to buy a new phone case with it. So now I'm receiving tracking numbers for, for the phone case. And I, I don't know what's what anymore. Um, so, um, but apparently the issue with the, the gauntlet is, in the last pack, we were supposed to be missing issue 71 and we received the magazine for 70 but the parts were 71 um, and then they've said don't worry in the next pack you'll receive issue the parts for 70 but the magazine for 71 and then the next five packs are issues they've now got another issue missing so we're now actually getting the previous one that we missed plus four issues and then Scott tells me I think what he said was he's received parts magazine and parts for issue 71 so he's now got parts for 71 twice and no parts for issue 70 and if that's the case the build is just going to round to a halt because I can't I don't I can't do 71 until I've got issue 70 so if that happens with me I'm just hoping they've made a mistake and they just happen to have made the mistake on his part work um, so I don't know um, so yeah right guys that is it so uh, I'm gonna well I'm on a late shift today I start about three o'clock um, and I'm I've just woken up at this time because I've been so used to getting up at this time every morning um, that my body clock is just adjusted. Um, one interesting thing is at work, they've asked us to take part in a poll. Um, now, the way that the southbound work what happens is, I don't know the actual rotor, but they've added new, new runs since. It used to be used to do six weeks of days and then you did six weeks of nights. Six weeks a day, six weeks a nights, And that's pretty much how the rotor runs now, except it's not six weeks and six weeks. It's probably something like eight weeks. So they've asked us if we would like the rotor split in two. So you either become a day driver or you become a permanent night driver. And I've taken part in that poll. And, um, and it's... Um, so far, the voting has come out as roughly 45% have said they want to do days, 45% have said we want to do nights, and the other 10 or 15% have said keep it as it is. So if this voting goes, it looks like there's going to be permanent days or permanent nights. By the way, I voted permanent nights. It works really well for me. It works. I can I can get a good routine going with the car. I can get a good routine going with the, with the day with shifts. Um, but what would if I went on nights? What would happen is their breakfast would now become evening meal instead of breakfast. Um, then I'll be away for the whole day the next day. So my lovely cat set will pop in in the afternoons. And it seems afternoons works better for her than mornings. Because she always used to come round about 3 o'clock. Well, if they're being fed normally about 7, 3 o'clock works well. And then I'm home the next morning. So I can say hello. I can go straight to bed. Give them a few little treats to say hello, I'm home. And then when I wake up, give them their, their breakfast. Um, and also the thing I've always loved about nights is when I'm on a day off and I've been working nights... 
I keep my night routine going. Um, so I can sit here at night and I can do my modelling, do my part works, do whatever. I don't get any phone calls. I don't get neighbours disturbing me. And then obviously my neighbours know I work nights. They don't bother me in the daytime. And you know, it's just sheer bliss. If you are, what's the word I'm looking for? Introvert? What's the people who like to sit at home? And they don't like to go out. They don't like people coming round. They just want to sit in there. I, I think of it as being a hermit. Um, it's just, I, I love I love it. It's, um, you know, I don't mind people coming round, but I don't want people round all the time. And uh, with the invention of online shopping, it's even better. Because now I don't even have to go out to the supermarket. I can just order things online. And I can just sit at home all day. And then maybe do a couple of, couple of live YouTube shows overnight. Um, just fantastic. Um, right, guys. So I think for the fourth time, that's the end. I've got no more to tell you. I've just noticed my eyes. They're not open, are they? That's my normal eye. That's my... <laughs> um, right, guys. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you didn't enjoy it and you've watched it this far... There's something wrong there. Hello, will you come say goodbye, have you? Go on then, say goodbye. Hey, hello. This is Shadow, by the way. You can't always tell from the rear end because they're both black. So let's annoy the cat by lifting him up. Say hello. My good boy, aren't you? He's probably just going to plonk himself there. If he ever sees a clear space on the craft desk, um, he'll plonk himself down. Why can I not switch the angles? There we go. Oh, Shadow, you are out of focus there. Um, yes, if I ever get a clear desk, he'll he'll probably plonk himself down in a minute. Or not. Are you not? No. Okay, fair enough then. Just as you think you, pre you predict him, he becomes unpredictable. Um, right, guys, so that's it for me. Um, thank you very much for watching. Um, so as I say, we've got a Robocop. We've got to upload the Robocop and the Gauntlet. And we've got the bus to look forward to. And any scale modelling I get done, you never know what's going to happen. Um, so take care, guys. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.